Morning all. Now today I'm looking at a couple of mobile power banks and these are both quite cheap. Uh, the first one is a two cell mobile power bank which uh, initially I wasn't too keen on. It's very very cheap, about £2.80. But it's growing on me that one. And then the other one is a three cell mobile power bank. I've only got two cells in there at the moment. Um, this one was slightly more expensive, about £4.60, I think. And this one has some interesting features, but I'm not so sure. See what you think. Now, the two-cell power bank was just £2.89, free postage, and came from Top Art Online. And the three-cell power bank was £4.86, free postage, and came from Toy Model 55 and I will put uh, links to both of these power banks in the description. So let's start with the two cell power bank and the things I don't like. Well the first thing you notice is that the lid has these snap uh, connectors so that once you put that on it's not really going to come off again um, unless you uh, break most of those lugs. So it's kind of a one hit if you commit two of your favorite uh, 18650 cells to this thing, then they're in there for good. Now, since it's only £2.89, I suppose you could argue that if you ever want them back out, you just break it open and uh, buy yourself another one. Now, the second thing I don't like about this thing is that this chip here, um, or it might be this part of the circuit, it was hard to tell, gets extremely hot when you're charging the two cells inside here and by extremely hot I mean burn your fingers off hot. Um, it hasn't failed, it's still working but that is a bit of a concern that it gets so hot. And then the third thing I don't like about this is that when you press the button you get this silly light sequence where they all light up then they go out again and then it tells you how full the thing is. Well now this thing is fully charged but why waste all that time with uh, an incrementing and decrementing light sequence which is completely pointless. Okay so those are the things I don't like. Now what do I like about this thing? Well it's extremely compact. I mean it's not much bigger than the cells themselves. Themselves, The circuit board is extremely small, very compact. Let's just go through some of the items on here. I won't do this in huge detail because most of these things are very similar. But we've got um, cell protection ICs here, DW018205 dual MOSFET. There's an 8-pin, what must be a microcontroller, otherwise we wouldn't get that uh, silly sequence of LEDs. This is a charger chip, and I'll come back to this. It's a 4054, and it looks like it has similarities to the 4056, which I've looked at. Now on the other side of the board, you can't get the board out on this, because it looks like it's put in, and then this solder joint is put on um, for the battery connections. But on the other side, you've got, obviously, the... Uh, USB output connector, you've got the micro USB input connector, the LED because this thing has a torch, I'll just show that, double click the button to turn the torch on and off. Uh, there's also a capacitor and there's an inductor and there's a shock key diode. So I think the back of the board is populated with that stuff, I don't think there's any more actual chips on there. Now also good is that on the back it says that the output is 5 volts at 1.5 amps. A lot of these cheap small ones are rated at 1 amp on the output, so I'd like to try and test that. The input is 5 volts 1 amp, so that's what it draws when it's charging. Now one other thing is that this can run in a sort of UPS mode. So here I've got uh, 5 volts coming in from a, a wall adapter. Uh, this thing says it's charging because it's flashing the fourth LED and then I've got the output going through to the Nexus 7. The Nexus 7 is saying 27% uh, and charging. Um, and then what happens is I can pull out the input socket and this thing will continue to charge the Nexus 7. I can plug in the input and the input will charge this and the Nexus 7. Now of course the Nexus 7 and most mobile devices have their own UPS because they have their own battery. So how useful this uh, UPS idea is, I don't know. But um, what you could do is you could just leave these two items on charge. The Nexus 7 would charge fully and then the power bank would also charge fully. So at the end of your charging session, 
I'm, I'm going to hesitate to say overnight because, of course, charging lithium cells, probably not something you should do uh, unattended until you have trust in your mobile power bank. But um, at the end of your charging session in the morning, for example, uh, both devices would be fully charged and ready for the day. So it could be a useful feature. Now, one thing that's uh, slightly concerning me is that um, I've just plugged the charge adopter into this thing and it's showing the output as 3.99 volts. Let's just wait for that to come around again. Um, and although that seemed to charge the Nexus 7 tablet uh, without any difficulties, I've just plugged it into my Nexus 4 phone, which is what I'm actually using to uh, video this. And the power icon is flashing on and off as if to say, I'm not getting any power. And you can see there that it's not drawing any amps. So I may have to change my opinion of this thing. I may have to say it's a piece of junk. So now I'm going to test the uh, claim written on the back of the box that it can supply 1.5 amps. And I'm going to do it with this. It's, uh, oops, sorry. it's um, two big ugly 10 watt resistors, uh, 1 ohm and 1.5 ohms. So that's 2.5 ohms. So at 5 volts that would be 2 amps. Well now since this thing's only kicking out uh, 3.99 or 4 volts, then it's not going to draw quite the 2 amps. It should draw a little bit more than 1.5. So let's plug it in and see what we get. 1.22 amps. And the voltage has now dropped to 3.45. In fact, it looks like the charge adopter itself is struggling a bit on that voltage. Are these getting warm? They probably will eventually. So that's rather disappointing. Um, we can only draw 1.2 uh, amps and the voltage has ducked down to something that really can't be described as USB voltage at all, three and a half volts. Oh dear, this is a bit of a shame, isn't it? This was rather nice. I rather liked this thing and now I don't. Okay, let's move on to the uh, the three cell power bank. So the first thing I should say about this uh, three cell mobile power bank is that there appear to be two different kinds. You can see on here that we've got an in socket, an out socket, the white LED and a four LED power indicator. Now look at this. If you look at uh, the one on the screen, it doesn't have the four LED power indicator. So if you want the four LED power indicator, if this thing turns out to be any good by the end of this review, um, then check carefully that it is this sort of second type that has that. Now this top panel isn't meant to come off um, because it's actually glued in place with these four lugs here, but I kind of kept prodding it until it finally gave up. And inside, it looks a bit like the four LED power indicator is a bit of an afterthought because it's all quite neat in there apart from that set of four LEDs. You've got five of these red wires kind of hand soldered into the board going to that power indicator. So that's a little bit nasty. Now the board that has the two USB connectors on it is a little daughter board which I can pull out. So let's have a look at the back of this board. Now it looks like um, there are there's a space there for four resistors. Let me just refocus the camera. So it looks like these were the original uh, positions for the four resistors that make up the Apple iPod um, high current signaling. They've not put them on the board and they've actually soldered across what they call R7. Now I'm assuming that that is the two data lines and that that is the USB standard signaling for take as much current as you want up to the USB standard of 1.5 amps. We'll test that in a, in a little moment. And there's nothing else really on this daughter board, just the two connectors, um, an interconnect for the motherboard if you want to call it that, and there's a capacitor there and the switch on the back. Now on this main board, it's difficult to light, so I'm going to use a torch. Um, there is a chip there try and get this to work, called hot chip. 
So we'll have a look at what hot chip is. Um, I'll try and look that one up. But the other thing which is immediately noticeable is in the three corners of this board. Oh, actually, that's better lighting. Let me just get this cover out of the way. There is a battery protection IC, the DW01, and its companion 8205 in each of the three corners. There are the two down at the bottom. And then up in the two top corners, you've got them again. And I couldn't really fathom out what this was for. Three separate battery protection ICs. At first I thought, well, maybe it uses the cells in sequence um, for some unknown reason. But actually, there is an explanation. Now, it's not mentioned in the blurb for the item I bought. But if you look at other sellers' listings for the same item, you'll see that they say that um, it's protected against battery reverse polarity. Let's test it. Now, this is going to be quite a good test because these uh, EFEST cells are high current. They're lithium manganese and they're good for 10 amps, apparently. So let's put the first one in the correct way around. And then I'm going to double press the button and the little torch LED lights up. So that's fine. So it's obviously working. And then I'm going to intentionally put the second cell, um, which would be this way around, in the wrong way around. Now, normally this would be an absolutely stupid thing to do because you'd be creating a 7.4 uh, volt incendiary device. But because of those separate battery protection ICs, the DW01s in there, this is fine. Now, of course, it will only be using the one cell still. That still works. The other cell is just simply uh, not connected. So anyone who's stupid enough to just not think about which way they put their lithium cells into their mobile power bank might want to think about getting this one because you can be completely daft about it. Right, now here's the data sheet for the uh, hot chip HT4902T and it looks like it's a dedicated lithium power bank uh, chip because you've got L1 to L4 on the left there driving the four LEDs. Well, that's exactly how this circuit works. You've got a feedback pin there, pin 11. And um, well, I mean, this is clearly a mobile power bank. We've got our uh, 8205 uh, dual MOSFETs up there. The DW01 protection IC is there. And there's our battery. So let's plug in the charge adopter and see what we get. Okay, well, that's a nice healthy USB. Also, we've got the um, LED power meter showing up there, or it did briefly. So it obviously sensed the small amount of current that this uh, charge adopter is taking. We've got 5.36 volts. Let's do a nice high current test on that. Um, I'll do it with that resistor. It's going to draw um, 2 amps. Now, this thing's only rated at 1 amp. But I'm quite keen to see what it does, uh, even at the risk of blowing it up. Well, now the uh, power has turned off because although it sensed the charger doctor, it's obviously now detected that there isn't a significant current flowing. So it's turned off. And now the only way to get it to come on is to press that button. So that's come on. That beep was something else. Um, so that's 0.61 amps. The... Uh, Nexus 7 is charging, so that all looks good. The Nexus 7 never seems to want to draw, um, even though the battery indicator shows that it's almost empty. It never seems to want to draw the full 1.5 amps. So that's sitting at a fairly consistent 0.61. So now I will put the resistor on it and see what that does. So that's now going to, that's going to be a full strength 2 amps. In fact, probably more because this thing's got quite a high USB voltage. That's turned off. Let's turn that on again and plug in. Okay, well that's interesting. The three LEDs are on on the box, but the charger doctor immediately turned off. I wonder if it detected an overcurrent situation. It still works. 1.67 amps. No, it seems to be holding now. And it's gone off. So maybe it does have the ability to detect overcurrent. Perhaps that's too much. Let's try something different. 
So here's another uh, resistor block I made up with three 1 ohms and a 2 ohms. That's 5 ohms. Um, so that will be 1 amp because the voltage is slightly high. It will be over 1 amp. Let's see what we get. So the voltage has dipped to exactly 5 volts and we're drawing 0.9 amps. The power meter has gone off but the charge adopter is still on. So it seems to be happy with that load. So it does seem to be overload protected, which is quite nice, isn't it? Um, so it's not drawing quite the current I would have expected. Maybe there's extra resistance in these leads. Perhaps this is right. Um, 0.9 amps and the voltage is... Well, as I say, exactly five volts. Um, maybe the resistors aren't exactly five ohms. Anyway, it seems to be able to sustain its one amp output, which is what it's rated at, but not the 1.5 amps. Actually, maybe I ought to make up a resistor pack that would draw exactly 1.5 amps. Anyway, it's rated at one amp and it seems to be able to sustain that. So that's enough fiddling about with uh, this thing. The five red wires probably wouldn't last much longer so let's uh, get some plastic weld on my screwdriver and start welding this lid back together again. So that's the uh, lid welded back on, not very neatly, and half a bottle of plastic weld emptied out all over my cutting mat unfortunately. So there they are, two cell and three cell power banks. Uh, very disappointed in the two cell power bank. I wanted to like you and I want, now I don't like you, which is why I've put uh, the only batteries in here that it actually deserves. And I'm going to put the lid on now. And this is going to be a one hit thing. So that ain't never coming off again. Well, at least the lights light up. Um, the three cell power bank, quite uh, a bit more impressed with this one. Um, I'm not sure whether it would be able to uh, provide 1.5 amps. Um, that would be worth testing at some point probably, but it provides what it's rated at. Um, it's got the little torch feature. As I say, get the one that has the 4 LED power meter. Um, it has the battery reverse protection. If you're a numpty and can't put batteries into a power bank the right way around, that could be handy. Um, and it's reasonably compact. I like it. So let's just go through my 18650 mobile power bank collection. Single cell, which actually makes a better torch than a power bank. If you buy the little torch head. Two cell, hmm. Three cell, well, not bad that one, I guess. 4 cell, which in all seriousness I use all the time and is currently charging the Nexus 7. Oh, and 6 cell, the one with the unfathomable user interface. But what's this? A gap where a 5 cell 18650 mobile power bank should go. Hmm, I need to find a 5 cell 18650 mobile power bank. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? 5 times 18650 mobile power bank. Yes. <laughs>